Welcome to the Lynn Community Television Show, where we focus on organizations working to make their impact right here in the city of Lynn. Here with me today from the Lynn Community Enrichment Program, we have Tony Dunn, the coordinator, Peter Capano, Ward 6 Counselor, and President of the Local 201, and Jeff Crosby, Director of the new Lynn Coalition. Uh, guys, thanks for being here. We're here today to talk about this enrichment program. And what it is, is it's a program being offered uh, today, tomorrow, and the next day over at Lintech. And its goal is to help citizens build skills, um, whether it be in, an, in a specific trade or many different trades. Um, we're going to get into this a little bit more in detail, but first and foremost, I'd like to make our viewership aware as to who you guys are and how you're involved with the organization. Uh, Tony, let's start with you. Well, I'm the coordinator of the program. Um, it's a <coughs> six week program. We uh, we just finished up our first session. Um, it's actually a restart. We did it uh, a few years ago. Kevin uh, McDormand was the coordinator at that time. And uh, it was very successful. We just had our, our celebration the other night. We had over 100 people in the program. Now, did Kevin ever end up uh, coming to you with any advice and, and what he all had done? All the time. Yeah. All the time. Did that help you? Yes. I couldn't. Couldn't have got through it without Kevin. Good, great good. job. Collaboration seems to be a big part of what you guys have done to achieve where you are. So kudos to you, man, definitely. Uh, Pete, no stranger to our programming. Glad to have you on. Thanks. Uh, Ward 6 counselor, but you're here really, local 201 guy. Uh, you're a trade guy, big time. So let's talk about your involvement. Yeah, well, I, his program is really like the perfect storm. So. Um, for, for a long time, uh, uh, committeeman, school committeeman John Ford and Ernie Pleasant uh, lives right across the street from Lynn Tech. We always had this conversation about why can't we use Lynn Tech at night? It's a gem of the city, and I know from my, my involvement in the local with the machinist training program that there's a whole slew of shops in there, and there's a demand for skilled labor in the area, and there's a need for good paying jobs within the community, so this sort of fits right in. So I've been an advocate for that and uh, working with the New Lynn Coalition. Uh, um, it really helps benefit the neighborhood that I live in. I live right around the corner and, um, and help, will help the residents of the city, I'm hopeful, uh, going forward. So essentially, you're a citizen who's advocating for some more options for our citizenship to have available to them. Um, I think that's outstanding. Pete, what's really cool about you is that like you're, you're just like any other guy. Like, yeah, you're on the, so the you're a city councilor, but like, you know, it, I, I'm not trying to take anything away from you, man. But like, seriously, like being an approachable uh, representative of, of a city government. I mean, that is a task that is it, it's a it's a trade that just doesn't exist anymore, and you're doing it well, man. I really appreciate uh, thank it. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, so, Jeff, now with the director of the, Lin, the New Lynn Coalition, right. you were a big part of uh, getting this stuff established. How was the how was the coalition involved? So, what happened is New Lynn Coalition is a coalition of about eight or ten community organizations and unions, and about three years ago, we started to look at the development process in the waterfront, and we asked basically two questions. Um, we understand new people are going to come in, which is good, uh, and we also wanted to know what happens for people who already live here. And our research showed wages are going down consistently in Lynn while they're going up statewide. And our feeling was if we don't begin to address that and the question of affordable housing, uh, where are people going to live once this development happens, then the population of Lynn who are already here aren't going to benefit. So about three years ago, we had a public meeting of about 100 people. It was chaired by Pete Capano and Maria Carrasco from the school committee, who was the chair of the new Lynn Coalition. And we asked people, um, what's your vision of what Lynn Tech could be? And all of the school committee candidates, the election before last, all signed on at that public meeting to try to open up Lynn Tech. And uh, after that committee was elected, we went to the school department and ask them to support us and work with us in opening up Lynn Tech. Um, really for two things as it turns out. One is job related things that might have boost up low wage workers a few bucks. Um, we're doing a nanny training program for people who do work in the home, taking care of other people's kids, give them a certificate, boost up their wages a bit. And also as it turned out, um, just community building things. Cake decorating has been huge. You know, yoga has been Volleyball. huge. You know, so th those two kinds of programs is what we're after and it's to try to um, help the development program that's coming in the waterfront uh, help everybody. And in particular, we brought in the Housing Investment Trust, it's a pension fund of the unions, 
to develop Lower Washington Street Project, the Gateway Project, and we uh, worked out a community benefit agreement with Tom Bauer, who is the hub holdings um, developer of that project, and he donated $100,000 over the next year and a half or so to help the uh, Lynn Community Engagement Program. So we're able to provide translators, help pay teachers, and work with the school department. So that's the kind of development we want, something that addresses affordable housing, that addresses wages, as well as brings in new folks to the city of Lynn. That's where this fits in, in our view. Okay, so so Tom is a big part of in getting everything kind of established. Um, you guys know about business; it it takes a little bit of overhead um, in order just to get the administration side of things rolling, and that's what you've got. So, um, outside of just having a, an, an opportunity, um, this is an opportunity open to many different people. You have translators, and you have other resources that are available there. And it sounds like there's some recreation involved too, which is really cool. Um, Pete, you're telling me I can go down there and learn how to play volleyball? Well, the, the funny thing about it is when we had that meeting Jeff was talking about uh, my whole intention was the shops you know the training for when residents and when people came up with their ideas it was all uh, all these different things that I would never would never have occurred to me so <laughs> the, the community meeting was great you know yeah, yeah, volleyball yeah. Uh, yoga swimming lessons uh, who, who would have thought so it's a really great. good integration of uh, fun stuff plus some training so we have options for everybody we get to use the school in that way that will benefit the community you know in a lot of different yeah, ty type ways you know we had to remember the bread and roses like there's we're union guys so we're thinking jobs but right. the roses part that matters you know it's <laughs> right. still in a community it's fun it Our, you know people love it yeah. i have to so. correct jeff too the cake decorating is not it's an enrichment program but it is a high level cake decorating program yeah. that's that's run by a person who has a business that treats it as a business, and right. she's um, she's teaching some really high-level skills that people can take and in, into the marketplace too. So I've made some cakes. It's not easy. No. So if you're doing it effectively, <laughs> all the power to you. Uh, cakes. That's a whole different industry now. There, the, the big point that I'm taking from this is really that you guys are the the, the community recognizes that the a lot of different industries are growing. Um, to today's social normalities, I mean, this service that people desire, whether it be for your pets, whether it be for your, your food, people are willing to pay for it. So if you have a business sense and you can go out there and achieve the skill set that people are actually working to get in and they're, they're trying to, they're, they're demanding their consumership, um, you can really make some positive impacts in people's lives. I think that that's outstanding. A big focus at the state level is building skills too. Um, so I'm sure that you know the governor sees stuff like this going on and, and they're happy about that. Um, I'd like to take some time to maybe jump to other communities that we know that are doing stuff like this um, and how effective they've been. Are we taking any of their ideas? Are we working in collaboration? Tony, you want to take this one? Yeah, we, um, I've done a lot of research around the neighboring communities that are doing this type of thing and there's quite a few programs out there. Shawsheen and uh, Northeast over in Wakefield both run night programs that are highly effective. They're very in-depth and, and comprehensive in terms of uh, vocational training and they look at it more as long-term types of training instead of little six-week bites they're doing year program multi-year programs and uh, the cost is well it's, it's still cheaper than going to say North Shore Community College but it's close to the same you know so that, that's maybe something to aspire to but we're not close to that yet um, Whittier does the same sort of thing, Neshoba, all the vocational schools around seem to have programs like this going, um, is, so we want to be part of the. Is there a growing interest, like, I mean, are, are the numbers rising in, in the general public's interest in, in, in learning trade? It certainly seems so. Um, you know, the, uh, we're affiliated with the building trades here in the, in the Northeast, and they get huge numbers every year to apply to their apprentice programs. Um, the youth that are uh, choosing Lynn Tech, that number is growing back up. You know, it's really uh, more and more kids are, and parents are looking at it at the junior high school level and saying, uh, you know, it's not such a bad idea to have a trade. You know, maybe college with the, the debt that goes along with it is not the way for my son or daughter to go. And uh, it's funny, the, uh, the electrical shop at Lynn Tech went to uh, Salem Power Station the other day 
Uh, they took all the, w all the girls with them and they learned about a huge need for, they're redeveloping that, they're turning it over to gas turbines and they want at least 10% of the people that work there to be female and they have a mandate. So the outreach is there, the need is there and uh, we're just trying to get on board and help fill that need and do it for Lynn residents. So there's an absolute rise in interest and we're seeing it happen across the state and now with the help of you gentlemen and others as well, um, we're seeing it happen in the city. So obviously there's an interest in learning a trade. Uh, Pete, you're a union guy. What do you think the correlation is? Of learning a trade? Yeah, like why do people want, it, I mean, why all of a sudden it, the, the well, interest? It just, I still think the focus is to push kids into college. It's starting a change like you guys are talking about. But um, people are incurring huge amounts of debt uh, yeah. from going to school. And, and you know, I think people should have the opportunity to go to college if they so choose. But there hasn't been enough uh, promotion of the trades. There's no plumbers looking for work right now. Right. You know, and, not, and a lot of people like working with their hands. The average age of a machinist is 56 years old, I believe. You know, so we need to, and local employers in the area would love to have skilled help, and that's just not really getting out there <coughs> enough. It's starting to, like you said, but that, that, that need and that match that we're talking about, the need for good jobs, good paying jobs in, in a city like when, and the demand for skilled help by employers really needs to be met. That needs to be emphasized. And I think we're, we're trying to do that. We're trying to fill that, that gap a little bit. You know, it, that, that's it, it's going to be a big solution if people can jump on board. Absolutely. I mean, we, we, it's, all day you hear about you know, uh, uh, a demand for rise in, in minimum wage. And it, it's for a service industry that just doesn't really afford for, for that type of payment. But here we are in a community like Lynn, and we're talking about plumbers who need to hire plumbers. That's a decent salary. Something to add? Yeah, if, we, if the big projects in the waterfront are built union, the trades have committed that they will bring in apprentice programs specifically aimed at kids for Lynn. So you're talking four or five year programs. Now obviously our program can't do that kind of thing. But where I think we can fill a niche is um, with uh, relatively low-skilled or semi-skilled jobs where six weeks of training will give you a certificate. So if you're a nanny and you walk in with nothing or instead you walk in with a certificate that says, I know how to do, um, you know, uh, with emergency CPR. CPR, I know something about um, child rearing and discipline and different theories of it, all of a sudden maybe you're worth four or five bucks an hour. Oil burner tax, six weeks. Um, people who are in the business in the city said we need people like that. We're training people with no background. Maybe that's a seventeen, eighteen dollar an hour job instead of having nothing. So right. people are talking about inequality. We're really directly targeting the folks who are suffering from that in Lynn and trying to boost them up a little bit. That's the goal of the job training part. You know? So, yeah. so go ahead. The, the idea of a credential is hard to get. So there aren't a lot of places uh, where you can get a credential for some of these things without spending tons of money yeah you know so they be and the, the ability of uh, local people that can help support this is also important because they see the need a guy like Tom Bauer a developer putting up that kinds of that right. kind of money shows that there's a recognition for that kind of need and we're hoping like that could spread to other developers and business people in the city that would be able to support the night school program so we could build it into the type of program that Tony's talking about right now this is like one of the only when people talk about public private partnerships we need more public private partnerships everyone says that this really is it's the, the school department Kathy Latham the mayor mayor Kennedy uh, local businesses a developer uh, new link coalition the the unions uh, building trades uh, local 201 uh, we've all really come together to not only say that we need to do this someday in the future we're actually taking an action that is beginning you know to, to grow something that that will affect you know th this problem that we have of the demand for, for right. good jobs in the city. Go ahead. Well the, the one thing we're leaving out is the students themselves, the people in the city. Um, we talk a lot about where we're trying to go and what our focus is out but uh, we can't do it without their participation and without their involvement and their ideas. You know we want to bring a holistic approach to this whole thing. We're doing uh, 
citizenship programs, all right, um, in cooperation with a teacher from uh, Operation Bootstrap. We're doing uh, conversational English. We're doing conversational Spanish. We're doing a lot of different types of programs that would qualify as enrichment, but can lead to more, can, can be a stepping stone to vocational programs. As you said, the, uh, the oil burner tech, we have introduction to milling machine and blueprint last, last semester. We're going to have introduction to milling and lathe this year uh, in the spring. Um, we're going to, uh, I got to look at my notes, we have cooking, all right, we have uh, computer applications, um, what else? cake decorating, uh, internet for seniors, you know, that's been a huge yeah, need. Yeah, it's a big need um, for that. This, you know, it sounds like you guys... Welding, welding's been senior. one of our most um, popular programs, and our most popular program has been yoga. See, that's what I was just going to ask you. What's the most popular? Um, what type of feedback are you getting from your participants? Uh, it's consistently positive. Everything has been positive about the program, that's, that all the feedback. Um, they love the teachers. Teachers are, for the most part, they're day school teachers in the public schools. We do have a few outside teachers, the oil burner, the cake decorating, that kind of thing. But most of them are professional teachers that just do a fantastic job with people, and they love it. So, so now the, the the community is a big part of this, and I mean it's happened on all levels. Um, th this th this is the value that I see in this. Okay, outside of the people who are participating, they have somewhere to go and learn these trades. Outside of the businesses who are going to be able to hire plumbers or cake decorators or nannies who are certified or have some type of training. Outside of that, what you guys are doing, you're leading by example in how to make a difference in somebody's life. And today, you can't, you can't help but just see all this negativity, and it's either it's, 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 it's race versus race, or class versus class, or it's, it's, uh, it's boss versus employee, or employee versus manager. And here you guys are, seeing a need and addressing it without even worrying about any of that stuff. So it's possible. I mean, it really is. Um, what what really speaks volumes to me is the is probably the repeat business that you're going to be able to generate. I don't see this thing fizzling out. I think that it's going to grow time and time again. Are there plans for the future? Definitely, we have five new programs in the spring that we didn't run in the winter. Um, so you've we, already grown. We've already grown, and, and we we're in discussions. One of our teachers, Jeremy McKean, is going to teach a, a, a writing program. He's offering the opportunity for people to come in and write their memoirs or the novel or short stories or poetry. And I spoke to a, a woman who's a designer at Lynn Tech the other day, and she wants to do a graphic arts program. So we talked about maybe joining the two programs together where people can talk about, they can take the, their old photographs and bring some of Lynn history, the oral history, and, and cement that for the future and put it down on paper and digitize it and that kind of thing. So we're trying to make everything come together. The oil burner tech, we want that to advance. The welding program, we want that to advance. Uh, the machine shop program naturally feeds into the other program that I run, which is the E-Team Machinist tra Training Program. So, you know, we're getting uh, some people who come out of there that are already vetted and we're already going to know they have an interest in this and they have some skills and ability. So that's going to help us in our recruitment as well. It sounds like when you came up with trade that you kind of just scraped the tip of the iceberg. When you opened it up to the community to, to afford their, their interest and in, in what they would th like to see happen, like everything kind of just opened up for you guys. Um, are there any kind of specialized courses that you're hearing requests from that maybe we might see in the future that, that are worth mentioning? Well, Scuba diving or <laughs> I don't know. Like I forgot <laughs> to mention that we're also adding a carpentry shop class that yeah. it's right. going to be project based. People are going to make uh, a table, learn how to make a table, learn how to use all the power tools and, uh, and be safe in the workshop. Yeah. What, what's interesting is um, not only is the uh, uh, students, you know, potential students, people that are interested in the program, there is interest from interest from teachers too that <laughs> that right. want to probably say, "Gee, I wish I had a place where I could uh, Teach, do this." Right. Is uh, media literacy uh, someone called and want you know a, a successful teacher in that? Um, 
history of wind, uh, someone offered. Uh, so there is a kind of uh, interest also from teachers. So I, I, I agree with you. I think this is going to take off. It's, it's sort of like a pride of wind kind of thing going on, too. It'd be great to see yeah. it like, you know, the tech to be like the hub for continuing education. I mean, I'm sitting here, I mean, part of what we do here at Link Community Television is teach people and enable them how to work with media. So I'm going to assure my viewership and any people out there who are interested in membership that I'm gonna work on a collaboration with you guys. But yeah, there are so many different types of groups out there. There at the Historic Commission, you've got groups like us where we're teaching people already. If we can get them all into one centralized location, mm -hmm. I mean, all that, stuff is ready available and accessible there at the one point yeah. something to add yeah i think it's also we need to understand we're working in collaboration to fill a certain niche there are groups like operation bootstrap that's been doing adult ed for a long time right you know a ged program might take years depending on where the person starts that's beyond the scope of what we can do but you're right the buzz is out there you know we're trying to start uh we're experimenting with a class in spanish this this next uh, semester on um computer programs, Excel, PowerPoint, we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm starting to hear about it from people that don't know I'm involved, and they'll hear like, I took that yoga class, you know, that, that woman's terrific, and I'm starting, to, so you're starting to hear the buzz back in the street, and that tells me we're in a good direction. I, at the graduation earlier this week, I said, I'm hoping we can get to three or 400 people, and I looked over at Dr. Latham, and she was, you know, really enthusiastic about that. And the school department's been really terrific. So I think we're going to continue to grow. It's exciting. Yeah, it sounds like you're going to, there's, there's a lot of benefit to the Lane community at the state legislative level too. I mean, because the state's going to see that we're making this effort. Um, are there any other example, uh, exemplatory um, uh, communities that have been recognized for an outstanding job worth mentioning real quick? Shashin, Essex Tech, any of those guys? Well, I think they all do a great job. Um, I think that Lynn is unique and we're an urban center and we have a, a large population that really needs this kind of thing that, to draw from. Some of these other places like Shawshine and, and Northeast and Wakefield, they don't have that center, yeah. they don't have the transportation hubs, that, you know, so we're, we're unique and we should uh, build on those strengths, I think. You guys have taken on a role that, that it needs to be taken on and, and it's been effective so far. Um, I urge you at home to absolutely jump online and try to f uh, find out more information about these guys, what they're trying to achieve uh, right here in your own hometown. Uh, they're on Facebook at the Lynn Community Enrichment Program. It's probably one of the best resources for people to become knowledgeable. Uh, pick up a copy of the item uh, this past week. Uh, there was an article in them about their past welding class. Um, you can reach out to these guys. Uh, Tony Dunn is accessible via email. It's dunnt at lynnschools.org. You can reach out via phone uh, 617-699-1071. Uh, fax number 781-595. 8770. Again, jump on Facebook. It's the Lynn Community Enrichment Program. Uh, guys, I want to thank you for coming on to the program. Thank Tony, Pete, Jeff, uh, continue doing the outstanding job that you're doing in the community. And that's it for the Lynn Community Television Show from the studio here at Lynn Community Television. I'm Sean Donahue, wishing you all the best. <laughs>